part of traveling through a pandemic it means that you may run into many closures mm -hmm. and this one looks very closed with barbed wire and everything greetings another day another state as we drove through colorado but we are now standing at a special place on the border of four states at once so we're near the Four Corners Monument, but unfortunately it is closed. <laughs> yeah, and this is the sign that's supposed to say, Welcome to New Mexico. New Mexico, yeah. And you can tell by the chilies. However, we can't enter because the Navajo Nation is having a huge pandemic problem. On a day now, we are entering Colorado and driving more north. Colorado is big and varied and it's most famous for the Rocky Mountains. However, that's not where we are. We're going to approach them later today, but we're in southern Colorado, which is quite different. It's more similar to New Mexico. All right, well, what we're gonna do now is turn around into Colorado proper, and we're gonna vlog from there for about a week. Road trip survivals. This is breakfast. And this is breakfast. Mm. And that's breakfast. So freaking thirsty since last night we couldn't find water. <laughs> Here it is, Colorado. Another day, another national park. This time it's Mesa Verde. And if you haven't heard of that, you're up for a treat once we do get up there. The drive is long and winding and all the up, up, up. So it should be very high there. Strenuous climbing. So we came to the main attraction here at Mesa Verde, the cliff dwellings, and they're closed, which is extremely disappointing. They don't tell you that at the front, you have to drive like an hour to get here and then there's you can just see from like half a mile away. Someone did say that it sounds like you can't even go down there unless you have a guided tour, and they're not doing guided tours. So I don't know if that's a pre-arranged thing or what, but eh, we at least could see it from afar. Yeah, we saw it. Better than nothing. Yeah. It was really about exploring it, but oh well. Well, here's another disappointment. More dwellings under us that we cannot see and reach. So this is called Balcony House, apparently, and it involves climbing a 32-foot ladder, something like that. Sounds really cool, but yeah, it's also closed. I'm gonna have to tell the ranger he should warn people because this is super frustrating. So yes. yeah, you would have to climb this ladder. It sounds really cool. And then you get inside and see it all. Meh. Such BS. It's understandable that they're closed, but yeah, it's a little frustrating that they don't tell you at the front where they check your pass and give you the maps. So. Yeah, nothing indicates it unless you That's probably go to part. the visitor center. We don't want to go there because this is where the crowding happens and it's a pandemic, which is where everything's closed, so whatever. <laughs> it's, it's... You can't win at all, but still. Yeah. Disappointing. So, some things you win in the pandemic, some things you don't. Yeah. Well, I drove away kind of frustrated from the main area there where everything was closed and I guess I must have stepped on the gas like for half a second too much <laughs> because uh, right after that I got pulled over by the ranger and he said I was 15 miles over the speed limit which on a wide open straight road was 25 and the ranger was among the nicest people I've ever met. Yeah, the rangers here are great. <laughs> and he let us off with a warning and actually gave us a very thorough explanation of what can be done right now in the park. Which is not very much and actually yeah we asked it was like well are you gonna reopen next week and he's like you nope. know we're not sure when but he also said you know maybe next week the fire danger alert here goes to extreme so they actually close more things next week. Yeah so, yeah. Good thing he told us that. Yeah, so apparently this park can be tricky and uh, visiting the dwellings always takes a guided tour which normally you can purchase from the visitor center which is currently closed. Yeah. No tour tours are happening. Yeah. So yeah, this park is tough in the pandemic. But he did say, yeah, if you want to, this is actually the best time to come during normal times, which, you know, obviously not normal times, but if it had been, we would have been here during peak time. <laughs> yeah, that too would be kind of frustrating. So now we know he said to come in earlier spring or late fall. He said late spring. Late spring, or late or spring. Yeah. yeah, when it's so, more cold but yeah. less popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was so livid when I thought I was getting a ticket for a park I can't even see and do much. <laughs> I was like, there's a good chance he just sets you off with a warning. <laughs> Luckily, that's what happened. <laughs> oh my god. 
And by the way, I'm traveling with a temporary piece of paper instead of a driving license for 4,000 miles. My license, so thank God it, I was driving. Yeah, so um, because all the, the Department of Licensing is closed in our state, I couldn't replace my license when I lost it. Yeah. So I got a piece of paper with no idea. But it worked. Yeah, it did work. Yeah. understanding of it, we didn't get a ticket. So that totally works if you need your license and you don't have it. Yeah. Dang, that would have been so cool. Yeah, so on a good day, when the world isn't going to hell, you can tour these things and that was really the intent here that I've wanted to do for over 10 years. So, a little bit frustrating. It turns out they didn't only live down in the canyon, they have some buildings over here and it says this was about um, 750 after Christ and they were kind of single story village houses which later evolved in these multi-story conglomerate houses. Mm -hmm. uh, Part of the story here is that um, what they call these the Pueblo people, they actually built with bricks and stone and they made cities um, like a thousand years ago. This is um, rather interesting because later when the Europeans came, that wasn't happening anymore. So these civilizations collapsed across both American continents, happened to the Maya as well. And it's really kind of unknown, could have been a drought or what made them abandon all this, but by the time Europeans come here, there was nothing, um, no human activity, just the remains. And for us being here, I mean, it's hard to say what the climate was like, but you can just imagine of like, yeah, if there was a drought, then absolutely, like you would have to evacuate or leave or yeah. just find water source somewhere. Yeah. It's hot. So here they have the timeline of the settling of the area where it be they came as semi-nomadic people and then they started settling in what they call pit houses which is digging down and living in a pit then it was above ground in a single story then multi-story and then the cliff dwelling was the latest development here where they became elaborate and then they had to migrate out so that's how it evolved down in mexico the aztecs did have masonry when europeans arrived and mm. there is an example of the europeans causing the collapse of that civilization and also in the Inca Empire in South America, but here it collapsed before, and so did the Maya. So yeah, these were down in the ground and excavated. Yeah, you can see what it used to like here. And now it's buried, and they're excavating portions of it. A lot of these circular housing or buildings that they're doing here. So here it says there's an oral tradition that says that people left around the 800s towards the Chaco Canyon, 100 miles to the south. And that was during a warm, dry period. So it really points at the drought driving people away from here. You were right. Mm. It could be so, yeah. And these big ground buildings seem like they're gathering buildings, like uh, mm -hmm. communal ones. And if you step out now in June, very dry, so it, it, it is no wonder that they would have some problems with water here. Mm -hmm. A lot of impression about the Native Americans may involve teepees or just camping around the Great Plains or longhouses, I guess, made of wood, but the truth is some of them had masonry. And you can see evidence of that here. And we know for a fact they built great pyramids and cities in both Central and South America. And here they call them the Pueblo people. They had all this, but it mysteriously vanished before Europeans found it. We're exploring another section of this park and it's a um, big area with a lot of remains from a prior era from 1800. AD and the thing is that um, they say it was a farming community and it had 35 villages right here which when you start doing the math it means this place was a metropolis and the same is true when you go to the land of the Maya in Belize, Mexico and Guatemala and Honduras that was a huge metropolis there in the millions mm -hmm. so these were not tiny civilizations that you just see a little bit of now they were big I guess their distinct style of architecture is this uh, circular structure and a lot of conjoined things. So over time they build on and create a bigger structure. The structure here looks like many small rooms and who knows how they enter them because it does not show a door. Where's the door? <laughs> how do you get in and out? Yeah, maybe by a ladder, I don't know. But um, 
in the middle of it there's the circular structure again so it looks like they would build a circle and then a lot of little rooms where everyone had their private space and some other purposes and then in the middle they gather in the circle and even hit the spiral ornaments which means that the circle meant a lot to them and they kept on making more and more circles like this they were the focal point of each community they also say they use all these juniper bushes here for firewood and it would have smelled like juniper smoke here a lot when they're farming and lighting fires and cooking and whatnot and warming up the sizes of the entryways make it look like they were quite small yep. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they hit water in the middle of these things. That'd be logical. <laughs> so water had to go somewhere. Interesting fact, in Bulgarian temples from around 2500 to, to, to 3000 years ago, there are drains, but they were for the blood, for the sacrifices. <laughs> they could have done that too, yes. Yeah. yeah, it's known where Bulgaria is. Before the ancient Greek Hellenic civilization, there was another one which did a lot of sacrifice. Which was the norm everywhere, really. Well, here we have the biggest circle of them all so far. And they say it's a reservoir. Community project. It even got a National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark distinction. Pretty oh. cool. So back in the day, they were they were ahead. They were onto something. Built in two phases, two phases. in beginning 900 AD. It's been an awe of stead, source of awe and study since 1891 by Swedish scientist Gustav Nordenskjöld. Yeah, the GoPro can almost span it, but it's a large, round reservoir building. Makes you wonder how they sealed it. Because cement was invented by Romans who built aqueducts and things like that, but it's not known that people here ever had cement. Or the biggest structure in the towns is normally the church, and this is bigger than a lot of churches yeah. in the West. So here you can see what's understood to be a family house, where in the back they have small rooms for sleep and storage. And in the middle you have this one they call the kiva, which is the communal room where everyone can get a seat. And it looks like fire pits and um, that looks like a fireplace to me. This is the last point we're touring here called the Sunset House. And it actually is among the cooler. I would say the big palace thing is the coolest which you cannot get to. But um, this here, you see a series of them far out there on the other side of the canyon. And some of them just look incredible that you could even build in there it's how did you even get their ladders I guess and they had to br bring the bricks up and many people live there and there and there and it continues across so it, it really makes it look like a city at this point where it's like a sprawl of, of multiple dwellings and villages where they had 20 -ish rooms in each well, you start to wonder too if maybe all of this was like level. Maybe it came out more. Maybe you could walk. Maybe they actually had more houses and villages and they all crumbled at some point. You know, maybe all of this was like a big platform. Yeah, it really is unknown what happened here. No one speaks of evidence of an earthquake, but you know, that could be a factor. Oh, and there's something big over there. Over there was a big thing on top, maybe settlement there too. Maybe they actually built it around like a lake, a water source, like all these lines. Could be that this was all water at one point. That would be really cool if, if rivers ran down through here and you hid your water right down from your dwelling. Maybe that was the draw. That, yeah, it makes total sense, honestly. Looking at the rocks, like those look like water lines to me. Possibly, yeah. It very well could have all been water here. And the rocks are smoothened by something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the dwellings continue all the way around, all the way in this whole canyon here. So this really is among the most interesting places I've ever been to. And it's a bit of a bus that we couldn't actually go across the dwellings themselves because that's the main attraction. But I honestly am done feeling disappointed because I don't want to ruin my mood over things I can't control. And we did manage to see it and it is really, really interesting. The thing is... It hopefully will still be here in the future, so we'll just come back. It's an excuse to come back. Yeah, yeah. We'll try to tag it on to a late um, spring skiing trip in Colorado or something like that and 
preserve our spot on the tour so we can tour and then have the GoPro on and, and climb around all these days. <laughs> Second uh, time will be a charm. Yeah. I have a feeling. I have a feeling <laughs> we'll have better luck next time. <laughs> That's right. And you know, the day is still young. So what we'll do from now is um, go into Durango and it's a really nice mountain town. And in Colorado, we have more rides than in Utah, if you know what I mean. So we'll see how that's like. <laughs> we have arrived in the first town we're staying in Colorado called Durango. And reminder, we had to reschedule our whole trip away from Arizona and into Colorado. So only had like a night in the morning to book and plan all of Colorado. This is our first stop here. This is our hotel here, a historic straighter hotel. And even though Colorado doesn't appear to have a terrible problem right now, we're still gonna wear our masks and check in and many other people are, so we're being courteous as well. This is keep distance, wear a mask, yeah, they recommend mask. Simit six guests limit at the lobby. Hello. How are you doing? Doing well. We have a reservation tonight. Welcome to our very cool historic hotel. You're a little muffled there. Yeah, we have to be the masked bandits around here. Bandit, that was the word I was looking for. I was saying that with the hat and the mask, you look like a masked robber or bandit. Well, it's very fitting for the Wild West trip that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a gorgeous Wild West hotel. It's the historic hotel in town. And we're really excited just to be in the hotel, but the whole town looks amazing. Hotel reminds me of the one that we stayed in in St. Pete. Kind of like a yeah. throwbacky kind of retro vibe, but very, very cool. I like it. I like this wallpaper yeah. and the chandelier. We're going to photograph this place extensively because it really fits our theme. It's begging for a photo shoot, really. Yeah. But yeah, it's a one bedroom, so nice big bed, a desk, a TV. And a bathroom. Journal. What is the, the journal? Oh, am I supposed to keep a journal here? Yeah, what's up with that? Room journal. Oh, that's nice. pretty cool. Our search for happy hour in Yelp led us to the <laughs> office. That's neat. I really like that idea. <laughs> it's like reviews, like the old school Yelp, but in like book form. And that's it's cute. private to the room itself. I like that. That's cool. That's so cool. Oh yeah, they've already filled the whole book even. In 2019. Okay, one more. So this one started in 2015. Here they have a historic portrait of someone. Looks a bit like my grandma. My grandma was a beauty when she was young. That's where I got my jeans from. <laughs> that one's nice too. Got a closet. And ooh. Yeah. Where the light is. Hmm. I hate when they do that. Like, uh, <laughs> where's the lights? Day. Here. Ah, there. Wow, way back there. Cool. Yeah, it's nice. I can yeah, nice. really walk through it, like uh -huh. in the West, not in Greece or, or Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah nice style. I like it. Yep. Touch. Yep. They already branded their own. So oh, cool. I like it. Yeah, it is. There. Ooh. And we are in beautiful Colorado, wow. in the south side of the state. Yeah, I like it a lot. All right, this is how you do a Wild West pandemic road trip in style. That's right. Uh, so the mission now is to find a shirt that fits the part so we can do some photo shoots here. Yeah, you need something uh, more fitting here. So, it does not look like actual Wild West store. I'm already getting hot from this mask. Yeah. There, see? <laughs> Will we find our shirt in Rio Grande Trading Company? Let's find out. Souvenirs. Mm -hmm. Some shirts, but not buttoned. I don't recall ever seeing a cowboy in a t-shirt. Yeah. Nice Durango designs though. They have stuff for cowgirls, hopefully for cowboys too. Oh, there is a cowboy right here, lying down. This one is a little drunk. No jewelry, no cowmen or cowboys. <laughs> so, um, one of the main reasons they booked this town is because it's really Wild West themed, and part of that is this huge um, Wild West train exhibit right behind there. We'll, we'll check that out in due time. I'm looking for a cowboy shirt. <laughs> there is something, yeah. 
Is that one of our hats? Uh, no, actually bought this in REI in Seattle. Really? We have the same exact Really? Hat? Very funny. Most cowboy -y. Denim, huh? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. So we got some stuff like this where it's a little bit lighter. Hmm, that might be good. I do like that idea. A blue, a red, and kind of this uh, lemonade mm. yellow. I actually like the yellow the most, I think. Mm. Me too, honestly. Yeah. Well, I haven't it's seen a the yellow shirt that I like in a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the nice kind of pale. Totally. Yeah, I could see myself wearing that beyond the photo shoot, so that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, you gotta think of that. <laughs> there, there it is. The blue is also good, though. Yeah, about mm. 99. Nice, okay. That's a good option. We've got this kind of stuff. It's a little bit darker colors. This yeah. This is a pretty decent cowboy shirt. Those are good too, yeah. We have some on our sale rack as well. Some... Oh, yeah. Hmm. That could be an option too. All right. Need to look at this one. one. Yeah. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. I'm liking that color. Yeah, I'll take you over on this side just because we have the weird little plastic thing. <laughs> is that a must now? I guess. I guess so. Hand <laughs> it over this way. Who really knows? <laughs> I like your store here. It's nice. It's a good store. Is it local or is it kind of a chain? Uh, it's still family owned, but mm. we have a couple locations. Nice. Probably around like 20-ish around the country, but we keep it kind of enclosed, you know what I mean? Very cool. Nice. Yeah, cool, we got the shirt sorted out. Very nice store actually. Ooh, our future car, not exactly, but the brand. All right, now I guess priority becomes food. Yeah. Ooh, huge ice creams. You may have to oblige eventually. We just ate ice cream for breakfast. Oh yeah, <laughs> never mind. Okay, fair <laughs> point. We did have ice cream and it's now what, 5 p.m. and that's all we've had. Yeah. We won't have another ice cream today. We've been enjoying Durango, Colorado for a few hours already and we're really impressed uh, in all ways. It actually is a very, very pleasant place. Here currently we are on the river which runs right through downtown and it's quite beautiful and people are rafting or kayaking down the river. Here in Durango they commemorate the settlers of this land, the immigrants who came from places like Italy and Czechoslovakia and a whole bunch of other places in Europe and they turned this place into what it is today, right? And when you think about what kind of people these are, what it takes to leave everything that you know behind, and say I'm gonna go and just get on another continent and try to develop it and make a brand new country there and it becomes actually the greatest one and that is really interesting to me because that's really exactly what I did when I came to the USA and the funny part is that a lot of my reasoning was probably inspired by uh, reading Wild West novels and watching the movies and so on and buying into that romanticized myth of the Wild West and of the American myth overall and because of that probably I ended up moving here and now in this trip I'm we're quite actually connecting with that and, and reliving it in a way as if I was one of those people but truly I, I continue to be one of them because it's the same process really. What we're going to do now is do a little impromptu photo shoot so that we can sort of theme and brand our trip and work on the aesthetic and artistic vision for it which always was meant to be the wild west right? Yes. And this town is just perfect for that and I got the shirt and just for fun and now there's some trains we'll see if we can access them but if not there's all this architecture which is very fittingly um, wild western and then there's also the art around here which reminds me that it's really the same era as the wild west here is the Victorian era and you can see it in the styles we have the XC3 with the 23 F2 and so that's pretty close to the 35 millimeter range which is not one that I shoot with a lot I actually prefer the 50 range so this is going to be an interesting challenge for me to learn to compose differently well, I like 35 a lot and it's good for getting kind of what your eyes sees and... um see your first shot here. Yeah, where? Go up uh, by that green pole. All right, see ya. I'm rolling around town with my bandit Wild West outfit for the photo shoot is quite exciting and entertaining yeah. so now we're looking for little corners that look like the old days here 
which are a lot because this is in the national historic registry actually in this downtown in Durango it's pretty cool as a historic district done shooting outside then we're going to go look for a nice saloon it is about 8 30 so it is around sunset but yeah we kind of had a long day doing a lot more than we expected to do today <laughs> and it happens that our hotel here is probably the best looking saloon so we're gonna begin there and see how it goes here's our historic hotel straighter and it has two saloons so we're gonna check them out now the other one looks a little cooler to me whiskey down in the saloon in the hotel and now we're in a room quite enjoying ourselves and having a relaxing evening for once we're chilling and i'm gonna write in the room journal so if you stay in room 222 two, two. is it two two three <laughs> two 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 i think two, three, three, one, oh, three. One. <laughs> three one one let's start that over <laughs> Well, I'm about to write in this room tour journal here. So if you ever come to this hotel and you stay in room 311, then you'll get to read what I'm writing. The so. secret message in the state stater mm -hmm. hotel in mm -hmm. Durango. Durango, Colorado. Our first town that we've been to in Colorado and it's been very impressive so far. We love it. Now we're thinking of playing a Western movie to get in the mood and tomorrow we'll be on our way into the it's mountain. maybe my favorite mountain town I've ever seen. I, I don't know, I didn't know Colorado was this good. It's amazing. <laughs> we're very, if we haven't already said enough times, we are very impressed with Colorado. We left Durango after enjoying an uh, easy-going morning and the best breakfast burrito I've ever had. That's right. So yeah, that was a really great start to the day and our bartender last night told us to come up to Andrews Lake. <laughs> Andrews Lake, Southern Colorado, San Juan Mountains. It looks a bit like Glacier National Park, which is also in the Rockies. beautiful mountain town of Silverton, Colorado at 9,000 feet up in the air and people were doing it right with off-roading buggies and all kinds of stuff I'm following the regulation for COVID strictly and they look like a desperado You do, you fit right in Which makes my day I got some oxygen boost, let's see if this is worth the money It's weightless so we just paid for air <laughs> <laughs> How do we do this? The 
this is how we're traveling through Colorado with our water and the oxygen handy by the steering wheel here. If you're wondering, it does make a difference. But you don't want to overdo it because it will make you dizzy and you're driving off the edge of a mountain at that point if you make a mistake. This is the red mountain overlook and no joke, the mountain is red. And in fact, such red mountains give the name of the state Colorado, which was named by the Spanish who first explored here. And it is because of large deposits of iron in this mountain. And it's high up here and I can feel the lack of oxygen. Much better. It's simply fantastic here in Colorado where we're smitten, we love it. The road we're driving is a real gem and it is known for being the best scenic drive of southern Colorado and it's known as the San Juan Skyway. It's part of Route 550, Colorado 550 State Road. It's so right here just below that viewpoint, we're here at the Idorado Mine and this is the eastern entrance and so it says that a lot of the workers used to enter right here and there's over a hundred miles of underground mines which is just incredible. Like, this is quite the scene but man this would be really crazy to do in the winter or when the weather is pretty nuts but look at that view. It's just gorgeous. Mountains. Let's check out this waterfall. What is even cooler is that this turnout is not the end of anything, it's the beginning of uh, 4x4 four four vehicle trail. You can take your Jeep up there and who knows how amazing that is. We'll find out one day. Very aptly named, Engineer Mountain Road. Yeah, you can come up here. Rough high clearance and then engineering pass only can be done this way. And then you're in between all wilderness here, see? Preserve National Forest and some really crazy rough roads going right through. We're feeling amazing today. Yeah, natural high. <laughs> I can't lie, we probably have the smallest vehicle I've seen all day, but it's taking us places and it is all wheel drive in case we get off the, the nice road surface. But way out in the back where these guys are, cars are coming from is where we came from as well. So we did a huge mountain pass with this Subaru Impreza. Our car is a media production studio right now. Everywhere we have devices that help us film this. This is a big production for us. We're gonna make many hours worth of content here. I was just saying we have the smallest car in the road, but it's still taken as far and it's been turned into a full-on media production studio. That's true, yeah. <laughs> and hey, we passed the Prius on the way, so there are other cars out here that are smaller and weaker than ours. <laughs>
almost in the town of Ure and we see some commotion so we want to see what's going on. Some accident happened here? Oh uh, yeah, car's off the side. Oh wow. Yeah. Was there people in it? Yeah, at the time. Oh, wow. So, yeah, dangerous environment here. Yeah, you do have to watch it. Like any, like hiking, too. You can make a really fatal mistake hiking. So. Yeah. We just came down this road and it was pretty scary. I measured my beats per minute and turns out I have nerves of steel because they were 83. I wasn't stressing it. But this is stressful. Seeing the yeah. outcome of an accident is pretty stressful. Southwestern Colorado and if it weren't for the COVID cases in Arizona skyrocketing we would have been in Arizona instead so it wasn't very high on our list to come to Colorado at all. That's right so we had to reschedule the trip very hastily and wow <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's incredible that's cool uh, yeah so I've always heard a lot of good things only good things about Colorado and I'm a mountain person so I've always wanted to come here and I focused on the mountain I guess uh, but I didn't know much about this state when I was planning other than I knew Denver, I knew Boulder, I knew Aspen and I knew Mesa Verde and that was it but now we're exploring this area we never knew existed in southwest Colorado we just drove the San Juan scenic road and everything around here is just amazing it's, it's stunning a bit out of Uri, Colorado, about an hour across incredibly scenic roads and now we're in a stunning place called Teluride, Colorado. Is it Telluride or Telluride? I don't know. I don't know, but it's a really cool town. <laughs> it's amazing and actually I think I see the ski lift Oh there. my god, yes. Right there. Yeah, so it's like a resort town and much bigger than Park City, but also really, really well done. Lots of stuff to do here. From the first glance we took, I think this may be my favorite mountain town I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. At least the way it looks and what it provides just looks stunning. I, I don't know, I didn't know Colorado was this good. It's amazing. <laughs> we're very, if we haven't already said enough times, we are very impressed with Colorado. Yeah, and take a look at this. Right as a backdrop of the whole town, there's a huge wall of mountains which have snow until now in June and a crazy awesome waterfall. The city park in Telluride and this is where you could be playing baseball or your kids could be playing baseball. There's so many shots at this waterfall. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> it's just amazing. You know, it reminds me a bit of Hawaii because of the mountains jumping right up like this. Score! So, when I was zooming out my lens, I saw that there seemed to be some kind of chairlift going up the mountain. As, as we got closer, it turns out it's not a chairlift, it's a gondola. Not only is it a gondola, but it's a free gondola, which is amazing. <laughs> it is really amazing. So yeah, now we're elevating high. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Ooh, the whole town is behind us. Yeah, the view is this way. And they say no mask, no ride, but that's the only condition because it's free. Yeah, so far, man, only good things to say. It's just mm -hmm. incredible. And this is summer tourism. What it's famous for is winter tourism. 
So we're here we're even seeing the oh, peak wow, of yeah. this experience. Just... Winter would just be amazing. Yeah. If this is still free in the winter, then this is just a win, but I don't know. I would <laughs> doubt that. I doubt it too, but who knows? and the weather is amazing it's not at all cold it's just a lot higher so I'm just gonna help myself to some more oxygen and we're gonna take a nice walk up here and in the absence of snow this becomes really just hiking trails here right in the ski resort they have provided some hiking trails as well and you can also bike them or ride a horse so it's not just for skiing and on this side it turns out that there's another base here for skiing and probably we're seeing another chairlift go that way so I'm guessing they take a chairlift from each end of this town yeah. out there in the distance you can see a bluff rising and it's actually over the road we just came in through and there's an airstrip on it so when you're landing in this is where you're landing on that bluff there we're gonna take a leisurely trail here no exertion because of the oxygen <laughs> so gold and silver was mined here and mm -hmm. still we're in the San Juan mountains. Oh, here we go. A telluride is a class of com compounds derived from the element t telluru telluru Tel tellurium. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Feeling affected? I'm not feeling great. Nope. We need to get food. We may just need it. What fun time here. Now we need a meal. We haven't eaten since morning. And I did a little research. So Telluride itself is at 8,750 feet. And the high point that we were at is about 10,000. So we climbed almost 2,000 you know, feet in like a matter of minutes. So that does explain why we felt so weird up there. The mining in this town caused 350 miles of tunnels to be built. Enough to reach from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Billions of dollars in gold, silver, copper, lead, and zinc have been produced. Interesting. Well, we are on our way out of Telluride, and they are actually repaving the road right now. So we're in a little bit of a traffic jam, but that's okay because they actually fix their roads around here. So <laughs> I don't mind. The road is pristine, just like about everything in this town. And mm -hmm. we want to come back already. There's world-class skiing here. There's also a great film festival and really for season tourism so it's a great spot and people actually live here there's a lot of infrastructure we passed a school we passed some you know sports fields so yeah it's livable for that reason too and it's actually really big so you know if you want to just hang out in town if you're not into outdoors for some reason i think you could keep yourself pretty occupied and the other thing is it's really walkable so we really like that about you know like these towns and cities is that you know you can walk to things and not be so car dependent yeah, there are plenty of whiskey salons too. Mm -hmm. Fits our yeah. Wild West theme perfectly. On day 10 of the Great Pandemic Road Trip, we find ourselves in some of Colorado's great small towns. Starting in Ure, we go up to Monarch Crest, stop by Colorado's largest body of water, take in the surf in Salida, and end the day in the mineral hot springs of Mount Princeton. Oh, we're 
here at the St. Elmo Hotel and I wanted to show you our room because it is full of really great design touches. Like me. We have the king size bed which honestly spoils you and becomes a must after a while. And everything is uh, Victorian style, ornate. Uh, and here's this whole area here where you can lounge. You know, most hotel rooms just have a bed. But here you can feel like a Victorian gentleman. Down the lobby is very, very posh looking. But the best part I think was the breakfast room and the breakfast where everybody was in a good mood and there were some ladies cooking for everybody and it just felt like the good old days before the world ceased to function. We spent all day on the San Juan Skyway which is an extremely scenic road and everyone should really come and enjoy it. It has so much around it like um, many many trails begin straight from downtown. It has a river here downtown and a waterfall beginning right outside of town mm -hmm. and a perimeter trail that can take you up on top of these gorges and to the waterfall. And, but that's not all. <laughs> it also right there has the hot spring and the pool complex. It just reopened yesterday, I think. It did. Unfortunately, it opens at 12 each day. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing actually because right now it's chilly and shaded here in the gorge. Yeah. But after 12 it opens and there are heated pools and they go up to 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. I like how around here they commemorate their past a lot. And here in the main park in town they have some mining equipment. It's really cool, the mining cart. The downtown is in the National Historic Register and our hotel was as well. And inside is a restaurant called the Bon Ton, which also is a historic site. And it has been there since the 19th century. So now we're gonna continue down the byway to a place called Montrose. And then we're taking our turn to our next destination. the biggest water body in Colorado and been driving along it for quite a while however there's no gas and we're running out so we need to ask the ranger where the gas is before we go bust and get stranded out here not only is there no gas but there's also no cell phone reception <laughs> we really have not seen a legit gas station in a while which is a little worrisome but hopefully that means that we're not far away from one but yeah down there is part of the lake we've been driving along it it actually looks really amazing a lot of RVs out here and boats I talked to the ranger and she said this is a popular place for fishermen primarily and in the back there there are many trail systems but um, the nearest gas is 15 miles away in a town this way so we have to get it here's the road trip mobile ever faithful found gas in the town of Gunnison Water and gas, water and gas, all day, every day. climb steady climbing pretty much from Montrose way down in the valley and we got to 11,300 the highest elevation we've been so far here at Monarch Pass this is the so-called continental divide which is the geographic middle of the North American continent that's what's special about this place After Monarch Pass, we arrived in the town of Salida or Salida, like they may call it here. The Salida. Saliva. Salida. Salida is in Spanish, right. but when I said that, the bartender corrected me and said Salida. Oh. And we know absolutely nothing about it, so we have to find out what there is to do here. I booked it as a transit stop for us to stay tonight until we head to the mountains west of Denver. Colorado is very serious about the masks, which is good. They don't let you go into places without them. And we just forgot them in the car, so we gotta get them. I like how here they have a big wall of honors. The honor roll. The honor roll exists after school here, apparently. Mm -hmm. Which isn't a bad idea, really. <laughs> I would very much like to be honored. 
Ooh, they're recording that steadily. I like cities with walking zones. Nobody is too terrified of the Rona here. It's a bit of Pendleton, but nicer. Yeah, it's got more business. One thing we're noticing is that Colorado's small towns are consistently more lively and less dilapidated than Washington's. Apparently the town of Salida is famous for its art galleries and art altogether and they've even painted their concrete blocks in their walking zone very nicely. Here's the concrete block art here. I like this one, it's mushroom turtles. <laughs> and this one is a very characteristic Colorado scenery. And this one is flowers and hands. Here is one of those fluffy cows from Iceland and another Colorado scenery. Much better when you paint these things because some places have them and they're really unsightly. Like chocolates? Yeah. Jazz? <laughs> or whatever. Wow, well, a pluralic. Tonight is shipping up like an easy going night at a small town in America. It's very sleepy today, even though I've had like two coffees. Well, we just climbed up to 11,000 feet again. Oh, maybe that's fine. Yeah, we're still fighting the elevation sickness. What we're gonna do in a minute here, to see the town better, is actually climb the town. There's a hill there, if you see it on the picture, where there's a spiral road. And then you get to see the whole area from the top, right there. So the drive, you can see the road spiraling. And there's a river walk down the river, which we're gonna take. Here's the local river. Ooh. They're rapid downtown. Colorado is the beginning of so many great rivers, like the Rio Grande, the Colorado, and apparently the Arkansas. Apparently this river that runs right through downtown is actually known for rafting, and there's a group of them here practicing going upstream. I've never seen that before. Never? Not on a river. I've seen it, I don't remember exactly where, but I've seen it in some other towns before. And yeah, it looks really, really fun. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to enjoy the river, enjoy water, and yeah, you don't need an ocean and big waves to be able to surf. Apparently not, I didn't expect to find this here. Mm -hmm. It was quite dry on arrival. Yeah. And turns out they're surfing. Oh yeah. This was um, pretty interesting. So we came here brazenly, being kind of happy-go-lucky attitude. And right as we got on top, a huge storm started. And it started blowing off a bicycle off the mountain and even making the car sway a bit. And we were right on top of the mountain at the same time, so it was pretty scary.
the thing is, we don't know what storms are like in this area, so it was actually quite risky of us to be like, hey, let's go up there and see what it's like, because it could be that their storms are insane, and, you know, we got a little taste of that with the wind pushing our car around. <laughs> it was extremely strong wind, and it's still strong wind, it's just not as strong as that yeah. moment, and hopefully it doesn't arrive again. Yeah. So now it's not raining that much anymore. We survived the storm, which lasted a grand total of like six minutes. So we stumbled upon some hidden gem here in the mountains near Salida and it's a historic bathhouse right on the river and hot springs also. There was another like spa or bathhouse like closer to town but the problem is that it's indoors which is probably great for the winter time but for right now we'd rather be outside. All right, so if you're wondering how bathhouses or spas are adjusting to the restrictions, this is also the same in that other one, uh, the other bathhouse that we saw. They're opening the pools, but you can't use the locker rooms or the showers. So you have to change in your car, come back out, and then enjoy them. I guess they give you a towel. I hope so. Because you forgot to bring your towel. <laughs> I should have watched South Park. You didn't listen to Towel Which is from here. All right, we made it. There are only two pools open. You can normally get into the river too, which I think would be really nice because that would be like your cold blast. But now we're in like the medium heated pool and it feels amazing. Yeah, right on, on the river in the mountain. And the mountain is there. It's like mountain tourism at its finest. And we have our own little corner here where isolated. It feels good. So yeah, Mount Princeton, <laughs> amazing. This wasn't even planned, believe it or not. We just kind of Googled it. <laughs> like an hour ago. It's really important to have off days or recovery days mm -hmm. so you don't kind of erode or exhaust your ability to enjoy things. Especially since we're filming, so we're like working too, so it's like, yeah, it's been a lot. And then every day we've been doing stuff, so yeah. we need a break after a while. It's at least 12 hour days. We hear a feel here of this warm pool, it's so nice. Yes, I went into the really hot one too for a little bit. Feels even better. Oh, but so you do nice. want to limit your time. Don't spend too much time in there because I have fainted in these pools before. Yeah, and also they can undermine your health, like your blood pressure and things because they have high mineral content and high heat. Mm -hmm. So you want to dose it and this was lukewarm and I don't think it's that mineral. Mm -hmm. So, and the coolest thing is this right here. You're actually on this awesome river. And the river can also be open and also heats up too. Some hot water flows into it. So you can be there and cool off and also warm up, whatever you wanna do. storm is coming. Another gin, another couple of mountain passes in the pouring rain. It's, it's become like a constant while we're in here. Some of the hardest driving, but um, I've never done this many mountain passes in my life. It's been like five days in Colorado. The nice thing we can be reassured about is that there's a Honda in front of us who does not have all-wheel drive, so if he can make it, we can make it. I don't know if he's high. Here's a point I want to make. Colorado advertises the cannabis for tourism all the time. It's in all the pamphlets and the magazines. However, if you're doing what we're doing, which is the only way to do Colorado properly, by car, you don't want to smoke on these roads. Smoking and driving is the worst idea here, you'll be so scared. So the guy or girl in the Honda we were just making fun of for driving very, very sloppily on a mountain pass, just turned around and went back, he couldn't take it. 
which is pretty funny. Yeah, look out there. This is exactly what it's like being in Colorado right now. You're like, oh, blue sky is pretty. Then this giant dark cloud comes over you. And it's not necessarily just a light rain shower like it is in the Northwest. It could be pouring rain and like super gusty wind. It could be hail, like you don't know what's in it. So it's been a little scary and they come really suddenly. Like we were just doing that hike and we were like, oh, it's pleasant. So nice out and all of a sudden it starts pouring. <laughs> Driving stuff here, you don't get hurt. Driving crazy mountain passes today at the very crest of the Rocky Mountains here in Colorado. And somewhere there in the distance is the tallest peak in Colorado, Mount Elbert. Susie's trying to identify it. What's funnier is uh, it looks like beyond that is a mountain called Mount Massive, but for some reason, Elbert is actually taller. Something ominous is going on here because we were walking down the street in Breckenridge last night and there was a Colorado checklist and of all the things you have to do. And one of those things was to drive Independence Pass. And I was like, hmm, I wonder where that is. And we start driving today and then we start seeing these signs. Independence Pass is open. Limit of vehicle, 35 feet, it's open. So it makes it sound like the toughest of all the mountain passes. And we just entered it. So we're gonna have some fun. And my only hope is the weather stays good. craziest mountain pass ever we just came from down there somewhere and we climbed almost completely vertically all the way here 10 miles per hour limit on the turns very cool, cool. it's probably the highest we've ever driven mm -hmm. the highest and definitely the most summits and peaks you know because you can get up you can get fairly close to Rainier, Baker, um, Mount Hood but man, there's just so many here. We don't even know the names of them. But they're too they're many, just, yeah. They're amazing. Yeah, they're all amazing. It looks like if you just walk up this gravel here and you'll get to a summit. <laughs> Independence Pass selfie. <laughs> climbed the highest paved road across the continental divide which is really the highest point of the Rockies. Now we know better what the continental divide is because if you are an early explorer you follow rivers and you get to this point here in the Rockies where there are no rivers that you can climb because they all originate here and on each side of the divide they go either east or west but while you're in these mountains you cannot find the river to follow so Going through these passes is extremely difficult for explorers early on and now these roads are really doing wonders for us to be able to see this. Looks like this Casco Peak is one of the highest in this La Plata right there. Yeah, that's La Plata. That's the highest at right here at 14,000 
and 343 feet. Here it's extremely cold in the winter and windy and some lichen thrives and even ants. It's very, very interesting. This is something like D1112, I don't even know, I'm losing count, but we have seen so much. My mind is reaching capacity at this point. Mm -hmm. The Continental Divide, Independence Pass, the much cooler one, by the way. Yeah. Okay, now actually begins the harder, more nerve-wracking part, the decline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing how far this little car has taken us. It's a great car. It, it is. is definitely a step up from a car we had before. That's true. Oh my god, the brakes, remember? <laughs> oh. We could not have done it in my little Sentra. Yeah, you couldn't make me do this. So, yeah. Okay. on that summit and it was wide open it was sunny and weather felt wonderful and then you come down and it gets dark like scary dark and it goes back to just this Colorado weather and these clouds when these clouds kind of descend they are so thick and dark and you're not really sure what's in them this was the coolest driving I've ever done probably yes Independence Pass it deserves to be on the Colorado bucket list so definitely try to do it if you can but it looks like it's seasonal You can reach out and touch rocks. Oh wow, you can see the, the rain, rain kind of come yeah. in. Wow. Backing up here now. I hope. So this is kind of like a one lane road. Look at this. It's not very, it yeah, it's not obvious, but yeah, it is. This weather is insane. <laughs> Even in June. Oh my god. Yep, the full on storm is coming. <laughs> So um, oh I was praying that this weather doesn't catch us when the road is open and you're hanging off the edge, uh -huh. which I got my wish, Yeah. but now it's still not really over uh -huh. and we're getting massive raindrops and really yeah. strong winds. Yeah. And that is what's terrifying about doing the outdoor activities here, like it changes incredibly fast. You can't see anything anymore. Now the rocks are coming because of the floods. Yeah, really. Like this is like blood kind of conditions. So at the bottom of this hill, there's a campground called Difficult Campground, and you'd have to be insane to want to camp in this kind of weather. So here's the issue right now that we're lower. Um, the water saturation is becoming really a lot, and it's falling down from the slopes as well. So the road is flooding very fast, and. All it takes is one hydroplane and you're off the mountain. So it's really, really dangerous. You guys remember that one car that got scared in the very beginning and backed <laughs> out? It was probably a wise decision. We came into Aspen through a huge storm and we arrived into our lodging here, the Mountain Chalet, next to St. Regis on the other side. So the rain came down really hard, but it looks like it's already started drying up. 
so that's good news. It's still kind of chilly though. Mm -hmm. I feel underdressed, but we'll see. Now we're gonna go explore what this place is about. Maybe we should put pants on. Yeah, let's go dress <laughs> let's up go a bit pants. more. One of the coolest things I think we found about Colorado is that all the small towns that are popular with tourists have trail systems beginning right from downtown. You simply park your car or get up from your room and you get on the trail immediately in five minutes. And big networks exist starting from every downtown. The other nice thing is that they've really documented these trails well. So yeah, they have like these maps and they're positioned in different places and their online maps have also been really great. Um, it's because there's some areas that don't really give you all of the possible trails and it's harder to go out and do things. But here they're encouraging you to go out, pick a trail and just start walking. Let's try this one here, the Hunter Creek Trail. Another really cool thing is that you often see signs that this is private property but it's effectively being donated to the community by letting it become a park. This is the kind of environment you could have if you lived in Aspen. Your own lodge with your own creek and a staircase which takes you right to the river. I'm pretty sure this is what this place is all about. And right there is the ski slope. So you have it all right here in pristine beauty. Another amazing example about what living in Aspen gives you and why it's so famous is this kind of place where it's a clearing in the forest and you see how everyone has a piece of paradise to themselves over the river here in the valley. Simply very pleasant, just like a mountain village. It's a countryside type of experience, your own personal experience. It's your own little forest paradise. And we merge in town. Welcome, welcome. Nice view. Wow. Ah. That was a nice trip. What an environment. I liked it. Yeah. That was really fun to just be curious about something and just follow it and be like, I wonder what's at the end. <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah. Yeah, this open feeling is so good right here. You're in the countryside. High mountain countryside. We're walking through Aspen just through random neighborhood streets. And I think that's actually the best thing to do in this town to actually find out why people like it and why it's so famous. We're on West Smuggler Street and this is Triangle Park behind us for reference. But yeah, we're just admiring all the houses here. I always like doing that. I did that a lot growing up in Hawaii. I used to just do my Sunday morning runs through the nice neighborhoods. 
you just kind of daydream about the houses. Yeah, and you can inspire yourself and see these environments that are created with perfection, to perfection. Mm -hmm. And here's what we're seeing. And up on there are the mountains that you can ski. I love the cottages, it's like a fairy tale perfection. Mm -hmm. We woke up at 7 o'clock in Aspen and we decided to take a morning hike. So we're on the Smuggler's Trail? Yes. On Smuggler's Mountain. There's actually a mine that we walked by on the way down. It's already open, so maybe on the way back because right now the sun is out there. It's not really on us. So maybe when we come back, the sun will actually be on the mountain or on the mine so we can go check it out. Yeah, and in the meantime, you get the views right away. There's the whole valley here in front of you. up on top of the smuggler mountain trail here and you get a very nice overlook of the whole valley where Aspen is situated. It's not a very hard trail but if you're not used to the oxygen it does get a bit hard but it's what people seem to do in the morning just to start their day and to get their routine fitness level up. We're coming down the mountain now and more and more people are coming out biking it and hiking it. It seems like the most popular spot here. And of course the view of Aspen is great here. And it really just shows you what Aspen is. It's, it's just a little mountain town, almost a village nestled in this valley. Many people have very large houses obviously which are very expensive but if you really wanted to you can just rent a room for a weekend or two. And just enjoy the same thing they do it's not really untouchable turns out there's a mine tour right by downtown aspen it's called smuggler mine which makes sense because that was a smuggler uh, trail and i think the mountain is also called smuggler and it's by appointment only so unfortunately we can't do the tour but now that we know about it we'll try Ooh, a bunny we'll try to make a better effort next time if you had to be working in the mines all day at least you can come out to this every day one last stop in aspen before we take off the gondola! We're gonna see if it's free or not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it's not. It says purchase not. tickets inside. Uh, so, yeah. Telluride free gondola. Yeah. One last thing to mention about yeah. Aspen. You know, it's obviously a very nice place, but um, it's also famous for being the residence of Hunter Thompson, who wrote famous things like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and the Rum Diaries and so on. And he's really kind of the founder, or at least one of the founders of American counterculture. Mm -hmm. And back in my early 20s, when I was thinking of being a writer, he was a huge influence. And if you think about it, what he invented is called the Gonzo journalism style. And what that means is you make the journalist or the storyteller a central part of the story. And if you think about it, that's actually what we do at YouTube. So his influence still remains even generations later in people like us. And we don't try to be counterculture or anything like that. But the method of storytelling he invented is also valid for us. We're about to leave Aspen with very good impressions. And one of the things we did not put on camera was our first fine dining experience in about four months. So we kind of lucked out because we were just walking around looking for dinner last night and we saw this place with some nice outdoor seating and we just kind of walked up and we're like, hey, can we sit down? And they kind of looked at their menus or their reservations and we're like, no, we're fully booked. And they're like, oh wait, we have one table that's open. So we snagged the only open table and uh, got to sit outside. It was really pleasant and it was called Clark's Aspen. Yeah, and the uh, food was among the best, and maybe because we haven't had fine dining for a long time. And we used to all the time, especially since Susie works in the industry, we used to eat out like crazy. And we've been off it just cooking at home for four months, like everybody else pretty much. But here in Aspen, the fine dining was open, and I had one of the best burgers ever in my life, I think, there. 
Yeah, so we ordered uh, three plates and just shared it. And uh, two of those plates were actually Spanish inspired. Well, four plates if you count dessert. So two of them were Spanish inspired. The first one was a Spanish octopus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, despite the fact that we're landlocked, I guess we didn't care last night because we ordered it. It was amazing. It had really great textures and one of the best preparations of octopus I think I've had in a long time, if maybe ever. Yeah, same with the burger. Mm -hmm. And then we also had a chicken, which was very good. Mm -hmm. And finally, we had a Basque take on the almond cake mm -hmm. and we had cherries and ice cream which is so amazing it was really really good but yeah we chose not to vlog that just so we could kind of relax take in the atmosphere but we did take some photos on a cell phone so we'll go ahead and show those to you yeah so fine dining exquisite hiking here mm -hmm. super nice weather today and the river walk yesterday was magical so yeah aspen is definitely recommended it's a nice place very nice place it's not very obvious at first why it's so hyped and once you immerse into what actually people do here, then you realize why. We're in the town of Littleton, Colorado, which in popular culture is better known as South Park. Right, so before this trip last night, we plugged in the Fire TV and watched a few episodes to jog our brain and remind us of the South Park vibe. We're getting our first car wash in a year because of two accidents that prevented us getting car washes. First hitting the deer, which he required a paint job, and that was a, a while he couldn't uh, wash. And then as immediately as the lockdown ended in Seattle, uh, we drive out of the city and a rock jumps in and cracks the windshield, so we had to change that and that now finally is passed. So we can actually get a car wash. Oh, it smells good. Yeah, it's like almond. Yeah. There it goes. It's a bit moldy. Yeah, if not for the smell, you'd be like... Ooh. That's why they made the smell nice. That's true. Okay, like, <laughs> well, we drove all day around Denver's neighborhoods and suburbs and we really like this one called Golden. It looks bigger than I thought and it's right by the mountains. But it remains independent with its own downtown, which is actually walkable mm -hmm. and lots of trails. Mm -hmm. So far, quite nice. Yeah. Interesting place, we just steps away from downtown and there's some kind of art center. And right beyond it, it looks like a restaurant. Sherpa house. Code where you guys can use your okay. regular phone camera. Just scan the code and we'll give you a link to our menu. Okay. Thank you. Evening, Thank you. Wow, oh, great choice. Sherpa house is fitting for here because we're so high in the mountains like yeah. Nepal and Tibet. We figured since we're so high in the mountains we'll eat like Himalayans. <laughs> It's like a mandala. Yeah, right? <laughs> Looks the same, but yours are combo. Mine are combo. Yours are chicken. I'm also having a local beer. It's good. We enjoyed our second meal here near Denver. First, we had the tacos from Texas. Torchies! Yeah, those are good. And now Very we had good. dumplings. Yeah, we had the Ting Momo dumplings. Today was mostly educational. We wanted to know how people live in the main area of Colorado where just about all the population is. Yeah. And we drove a lot. The heat finally diminished right now. It's really pleasant. It's really cloudy looking. Yeah. It's pretty. Up in the mountains, yeah. Today has been 
quite the climb. We came in from Salida into Denver. We went all around Denver. We went to Boulder. We went to Golden and to Littleton. And now we climbed all the way to Breckenridge, which is way into the Rockies. And we still have 10 minutes more of climbing. Well, I just drove a crazy road here with Suzy and it was pretty scary for us because we're not quite Colorado people and it just happens to be the main freeway of Colorado, 70 which is how they get between the east and west side of the state so it's, it's one of the scariest roads if you think about it especially if you have to do it in winter It's like a two-lane road and uh, not the best paved um, probably because of yeah, the snow coming in and messing it up so there's cracks all over it, it's not very smooth and you're like right next to the rocks and so it was scenic but also really scary if you've never, especially if you've never driven it before if you drive it a few times maybe you get used to it but if you don't know what's around the corner it's scary but once you come out of all that you you go through a big tunnel the eisenhower town now and then you go down down like crazy and then you end up here in this area called the summit which is stunning gorgeous steep grade and you've got these giant semi trucks on both sides <laughs> and they're supposed to be going slow but it's still scary and at some point it says truckers don't be fooled four more miles of steep grade <laughs> i appreciated their sense of humor there but oh my god that was scary for reference here are the elevations of the peaks we're seeing in the distance 11,000, 14,000, 14,000, 12,000, 11, 10, 13, 13, 9, 10, 12, 11 and so for us, Mount Rainier is our tallest peak, and that's about 14,000. So this is like a ton of Mount Rainier. It's like all clustered next to each other, which is insane. Yeah, in fact, in Colorado, there's 14,000 peaks, many of them, and in fact, 50 something of them as tall as Rainier. It's crazy. Like, it, it's hard to put this into any context because I've, I've never been to a place like with such concentration of mountains. Yeah, it's crazy. I have never felt like our car is too small like I have been here. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> this state makes our car feel small. We can do it, but here. Look, you can take a hike right up there. Let's take a little walk. Trails right off the scenic area and in fact a better vantage point for the lake. I'm getting winded. The ascent and the descent actually made my legs wobbly. Yeah. A lot of elevation fast changing. Nice little forest here. If you wanna wipe away the stress. <laughs> And replace it with green. Stretch your legs <laughs> yeah, stretch your legs as well. Do a mini hike in the forest. Go back to the madness. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I was gonna yell at you and tell you to keep an eye out for the moose. Oh, that's what that is. Well, when you walk along here and you see a pile of I just saw it. If you see orange poop, yeah. that's moose poop. I just saw it, it's big. Yeah. So moose poop in there. And, uh, I just saw it. But you know. during, during our work, he likes to attack the moose. Oh, wow. And, but the point being is, it's an interesting thing that goes on with moose. Interesting. And he's been backed down by moose, and he's backed down moose. But again, uh, if it's a cow with calves, you might have a problem. Oh boy. I've had, there's some big uh, deer up here. Hmm. Everything that's wild is a little bit dangerous. So All right. You already knew that. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Thank you very much for the for warning. Thank I'm you. I'm going to holler at you, but <laughs> I didn't think you were going to go too far. No, we weren't going far. Yeah, thank you. Have a good day. Well, apparently... We're in moose territory now. That's very good to know. Yeah. And um, I did see droppings and they were big and I was like, what is that? And turns out it's moose. Oh, there we go though. Welcome to the town of Breckenridge. And wow, look at those mountains over there. Yeah. 
You're like almost at the peak. <laughs> on the right, Crazy. on the right is a huge trail system. Yeah, like this whole road, there's been like a bike path. You could be biking this whole thing. That would be real neat. Serious exploration mission today. We are in Breckenridge before nightfall. We avoided night driving, which I'm very glad for. Yeah. And now we're strolling into town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not really sure what's here in town, but it looked like, you know, like a resort town, like a bigger version of Whistler. That's kind of what we're liking it to so far based on what we've seen. I think we're about 9,600. Almost 10,000 feet. Yeah. It feels that way. Yep. I feel a little squeezy. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping tomorrow we see it in the sun. Yeah. Looks like closing time is 10 o'clock for these restaurants, which is good. It's about an hour after sunset. Here's a map of this town, it's big. It says there are nearly 100 restaurants and night spots, wow. hundreds of shops and boutiques. Very cool. Very built up. I thought it wouldn't be this big. I thought it was tiny, honestly, it's on the map. Big, it yeah. looked tiny. It's really big. Welcome to the town of Breckenridge National Historic District, 1859. That's pretty old for American standards. We are completely aimlessly roaming here. But look at what we're finding. It's like on top of a mountain, there's a, a ferry <laughs> and there's a restaurant inside. Here it is. It's a sports bar, it, it looks like a ferry and it's in the middle of a mountain lake and it's surrounded by snow in June. Yeah, Colorado's developed really really well. I mean, it, it puts Washington State to shame honestly. And when I look at the number of tourists it explains why it's like 80 something million tourists last time they counted. Sports bar. Yeah. For a sports bar and restaurant on top. That's cool. Yeah, so... How's your first impression of Breckenridge? I love it. Looks like there's a lot to do here. And yeah. I like that it's lively even in the off season of sorts. I know it's four seasons, but you still imagine it's busiest during the winter. But it's still really lively. This is what we're seeing downtown Breckenridge. Very gorgeous. It's almost unreal looking like a cartoon or a painting. That's pretty great. So Amazing cool. So cool. And they have this um, sample garden made by the river here. Very, very nice. Here's the river on the left and the gardens in front and the mountains in the back. A perfect little river runs through downtown. It's like picture perfect with crystal clear water. And it's just as delightful as it was last night, if not more, really. Yeah, it looks really amazing in the daytime and the weather is pleasantly warm for being late July. We thought it might be a little chilly because it got chilly last night, but right now it's actually quite warm. But it's also great to not be hot right now, it's just perfect. Mm -hmm. Breeze is gentle and what is in front of us here is the Alpine Garden and the Alpine Slopes. And this is what we're looking at, it's just so great. We learned that just a few days ago the downtown strip was converted into a walking zone. That's right, so they shut down part of Main Street, closed it to cars, and a lot of the dining is spilling out onto the street, which is what I think a lot of restaurants are having to do because of COVID. They're uh, giving people more outdoor options, which is nice because you can social distance that way. We're strolling through Breckenridge and it seems like they mostly just reopened all the things here. Sounds like, yeah, June 1st is when things started to reopen. And actually the resort here isn't open until July 4th, which is kind of a shame because we really want to do the gondola, we want to do the ski lifts, but understandable, but they have plans to reopen July 4th. And that's a week away. But, yeah, I look at their website. Their website is really, really good. I think it's the, probably the main tourism website here. And it looks really pro, but they've got you know all of the measures listed, like what's changed, what you need to be aware of, what's open, when it's opening. It's 
really really organized yeah and what's really impressing us is on the ground they've done all the changes very quickly and they work mm -hmm. and it gives you a sense of confidence but it also shows you that they're very quick to adapt and to perform they're not really in some kind of a paralysis and don't know what to do with themselves you know tourism is their main income and they're doing fast what they can to maintain it yeah it's really interesting because you know we all got hit with this pandemic all around the same time so you can judge based on you know what certain states or cities have done to adjust we've all had about the same amount of time to do it and certain places are obviously a little bit more organized than others Right, right, yeah, they're making it work. Mm -hmm. it, it gives me the feeling that these people here don't sit around and, you know, complain, say, woe yeah. is me and what yeah. are we going to do? They've done all the things and the place has come back to life now, a altered, good, but good. A good example would be, you know, like that they're not waiting for one government mandated or city mandated sign about wearing your mask. Each business here has kind of made their own. They look really great. The people are really following, you know, the requests, and you feel pretty safe as a result. Yeah, and they enforce them strictly. They're serious. It's good. It's mm -hmm. good to be here. Yeah. It shows you that the people have the right spirit. Right. Yeah. Here's crepes. You want to get a crepe? Yeah. All right. Let's get crepes for breakfast. Sounds good. This was busy last night. Yeah. Even with our tight schedule, moving hundreds of miles a day, we're still saving time for hiking because what's the point of only driving? That's right. So, uh, the gobrek.com, I think was the website. I think it's like the main kind of tourism website for this area and it's very, very organized. It's super easy to find a hike and they kind of organize it based on how much time do you have? Are you downtown? Do you want to drive somewhere? So it's called the Carter Park Trailhead, but it's also the um, beginning point for a lot of longer hikes. We do, do need to make sure that we're following the right path here. That's Snowflake Trailhead. Nice. Here you have the warning to not crowd. Well made metal sign, not a paper one like in Seattle. I'm telling you, the signage is great. Like they all just kind of were like, hey, we need signage, somebody make it. It's like every little brand has their own. It's fast. Yeah, here it tells you there are coyotes here. Do not run or turn your back, that is true. Dogs will bite you in the back. That's how the kind of animals they are. Yes, you know. This is what is cool about Colorado mountain towns. Immediately off downtown begin the trail systems. Yeah, this is only like 0.2 miles away from the hotel, but since we just checked out, we drove to the, the trailhead, and of course there's a really nice parking lot. Here's the signage. Dogs allowed, hikers allowed, bikers allowed. There's a difficult trail, I think that's what the diamond thing means. and tells you which way to follow. And here are the stairs they made for this. And lodges are right here. Here we have some pretty hardcore mountain bikers. sharing the trail with bikers here but the good news is it's no longer that steep after the staircase yeah looks like it it's like a winding path through these trees yeah so neat the maps say moderate walking path yeah i wonder if these become ski trails in the winter snowshoes i believe snowshoe yeah on this side and over there yes the ski there's a hill over here i think the top of this one which is almost at 10,000 feet which, by the way, is why we're panting so much. Not because we're unfit. <laughs> it's tough. It really gets to you when you're going uphill. <laughs> yeah, we hike a lot, but we live on the sea level, so this yeah. is a bit tougher for Elevation us. Elevation changes is tough. Takes some getting we're used. walking through the forest. It says entering private property, but it does let you pass through, and in fact, the trail arrows point in, and there's a little area here, which this oops, might be private, is but probably whatever. for the cabin. Yeah, but the... Like the, and little teepees. That's so cool. Yeah, they're bushcrafting here, and someone's sharing their private property and allows people to pass on the trail, which is really awesome to see. Why hoard the forest? Here they're bushcrafting, making sheds and teepees and campsites. This is the technical stuff they were warning about. But you have an alternative if you don't want to get up on it. 
you have three ways of going through and you have difficulties that's nice so this is the double black diamond which is really narrow it's like three times my foot width and it's long so it's easy to wipe out right here and if you stop too you kind of start falling off it we did manage to find a little clearing out there and the sun came out just as we got here how's your adaptation to mountain living going i feel better now we must not have been climbing as hard those stairs were hard but after the stairs it does even out a bit and you get to catch your breath and you actually get to enjoy it This is great because normally when I go to ski resorts in the summer, you, you take the slopes that have the lifts mm -hmm. and they're really steep and you see people going down like um, suicide. <laughs> down, yeah. yeah, and I was, I'm always like, I would never do this, but this I would actually totally do. You can do it fast, you can actually do it slow. Like those two ladies just did it slow. And it's like, you just kind of work up to your comfort level. Yeah, it's totally fine. And then you get these vistas as you're biking down. And right down there, we're in the clear. And we see the village here. this afternoon and we drove west straight for a while and then all the scenery changed and we passed a bunch of canyons and we made it to the Colorado National Monument which um, now on this side of Colorado it's next to the border with Utah and it looks a lot more like Utah than what we saw in the Rocky Mountains so this place is a canyon on the Colorado River from what I understand and it looks a bit like Zion, honestly. Not exactly the same, but it's a similar environment. So we're gonna check that out. Apparently there's a scenic road for about 23 miles and then you get to some views. for an Airbnb in this really huge canyon and it's been an issue trying to find it I input the GPS coordinates uh, that took me to the middle of nowhere I'm calling the number it's not getting picked up your call has been forwarded to an yeah. there's barely any signal around here you have to be exactly in the little bit of civilization there is and this general store is not even open here but we also found another car looking for the same person in the same area for a room as well. So it's not clear how to check into it. But the host has a lot of good reviews, so it's not bogus. So the only thing that remains to do is drive back where the pin is that we have the little bit of a coordinate. Sure, it's beautiful here. Big 
up on some other one down the road but um, that one is also in the middle of nowhere however when you get to the other one what you see is exactly what the picture has but there is no room there and so the only, the only other remaining lead actually we have two remaining leads one is a guy was looking for the same uh, person and he just went somewhere over here <laughs> I don't know what he did and so if we find him maybe he knows something more by now the other thing is that I did spot some road just earlier when we were down here and there was a property there and that's the the last option that we can figure out around here so they found themselves a little cabin and the way to it it's unclear what we do is there an address here yeah that's our address oh that's it <laughs> barging do you have a tractor now we're rolling up to someone's house with no, no indication whose it is if it's what we need what? Looks a little empty, but there is there's, a sprinkler there's going. There's a sprinkler and a tractor. And no vehicle. No vehicle. Maybe she's looking for us. Yeah. It's worth going up to it, I guess. Um, it's the right address. That is true. We have good cause to be here. <laughs> Hello? Is anybody here? This is the big geography that I saw in the picture a sprinkler indicates someone does live here maybe we proceed down the road because yeah. this thing is good it might be more stuff down there yeah let's see it's more this way yeah Hello. Hello. Are you Jody? Yes. Ah, we found you. <laughs> okay. Um, air, are you with my Airbnb guest? I am Mar Martin. Yes, Martin. Airbnb is. Okay. Yes. So sorry. Uh, let me. Um, I was just throwing some firewood out here. So let me turn around and take you back up to the house. Okay. And then um, I'll show you around real quick. Okay. So we figured this place out and it's actually amazing, even though it's hard to find. Right down there. We were told this hill there gives you a supreme vista, which we're gonna use for sunset right now. And the storm is going that way, so there's some showers remaining in the air. We climbed up here and no joke, it's one of the best views. And especially with these clouds now, because of the storm, this is what we're seeing right here. There's no civilization in sight other than some RV there, which I think is also a guest. It was definitely an adventure finding, but once you find it, it's, it's enchanting. How's it going? Got quite the chorus in here. <laughs> there are crickets with us in the room. So it's gonna be a all night chorus. Hopefully it's actually soothing and makes you sleep instead of waking up all night. There are worse insects. It could be worse. We've had worse actually. We've had a whole army of ants come through in the middle of the night. <laughs>
<laughs> We've also hit leeches in the shower. Yes, we've had leeches. Uh, we've had a frog in the shower, in fact, a little bit tiny frog. So, yeah, we're we're a little used to rustic. It's not a big deal. Mm. Oh, you see it? Yeah, it's right up here. Oh. One of them is. This is yet another reason to always travel with earplugs, because you never know what kind of sounds there might be. You hear that, right? It just stopped. <laughs> They're so random. Oh. <laughs> or they can't scream all night. I don't know. We're gonna find out. That's a nice sound. Well, it goes for a while. Wow. That's cool. Maybe if you do that, they'll be quiet. <laughs> And do like a Tai Chi master, make a slow rinse. Mavic Pro 2. up in the middle of the canyon and we're leaving our rustic airbnb right now and even though utah is right over the hills there we have to go around a bunch to get to moab so we still have a lot of canyon driving ahead of us so let's see how that goes should be quite interesting we're traveling in a canyon along the dolores river and this is some of the most uh, remote and isolated empty places we've seen on this trip and it's in western colorado i guess this part of the USA never saw any development almost. Early on some Spanish explorers came but it was so far from Mexico and the rest of their empire so they didn't do much here and then some mining was attempted but it looks like abandoned shortly and over here you can see some crazy tracks hanging off the edge of the canyon down there. It was longer in the past but they were trying to haul something out of the mountains and it was soon after abandoned and it looks like after that nothing was ever done here it's a beautiful place and almost completely empty of human development <laughs> 